What's up guys, this is Theo here coming to you live with another coding, coding tutorial and uh, this series is going to be on Codecademy's Learn AngularJS 1.0 so uh, let's get started. I'm going to click start right here and we are going to go into the first lesson so let me click get help and restart because I've already done this course but I want to show you guys how it works so that should clear everything out and I think we are now ready to go. So we're going to follow the instructions and I'm going to walk you along. So it says in app.js, type in the contents here. So we're going to save our app. So we're storing in, in this variable app. We're saying, hey, Angular, um, we want to use your, your method module and we want to create an app for ourselves. So first parameter we give it is the name. Second parameter is an empty array. Later on, this could be filled with dependencies, so basically just other Angular JavaScript files that we want to use. But for now, we're going to leave that blank, and we're going to click Run. Make sure this works for us. It does. Next, we're going to open up index.html right here. Close that up. And inside of our body right here, we are going to say ng app. We're going to say Angular. We want to attach our app to the body. Okay. We're going to hit run. Three. We're going to open up JavaScript controllers, main controller. Close that. Inside of here, we're going to paste this into here, into this folder, which says, okay, Angular, grab our app, run your controller method, create us a controller named main, co main controller, and then the second argument will be an array, and it's going to be our dependencies we're going to inject. We're going to inject scope. We're going to talk a little bit about that more. But basically, scope is like the JavaScript this variable. So everything inside of your controller that you assign with scope is then available to you in your view. So pretty cool. And that's how it works. Um, so we're going to say scope.title and top sellers in books for now. And now we're going to hit run on here. Make sure this works. Four, we are now going to go to index.html. We're going to go into our main class. And now we're going to say ng controller. So we're going to say, hey, Angular, uh, we want the main controller to control everything from this div all the way down to here. So not the footer, just everything in between these two tags. The main controller has the main over. So cool. Let's run that. Make sure it works. Cool. Uh, five, in index.html, inside of div class main, modify the h1 element so it has title. So these two curly braces are called data binding. What we're doing is we're taking an app.js, or in main controller.js, taking this title, and since I said the controller has access to scope, we are binding the title, top sellers in books, to this area in our HTML. So let's run that. Make sure it's good to go. And it is indeed good to go, and we are seeing top sellers in books right there. So let's move on to two. And uh, so our first instruction here is both the controller, main controller, and the view index.html have access to scope. This means we can use scope um, to communicate between the controller and the view, and the controller change the value of the title uh, to to your own string. So we'll say welcome to Angular. JS, and if you guessed it right, this should change to welcome to AngularJS, and that should be right. Cool. Number two, uh, any new properties attached to scope will be available to use in the view. In the controller, attach uh, promo to scope and set its value to your own string. So say promo um, selling cool books, maybe. And let's run this. Make sure it sees our property that we created. And finally, three, in the view, under the h1 element, add an h2 element and use an expression to, dis to display promo on the page. So we're going to follow those instructions, create our h2, and we're going to bind promo. And then we run this, and we should see our binding down here. There it is, selling cool books. So hopefully you're starting to pick up on how this works. So now we're on the third one, and it says let's add more data to the controller and display them in the view. In the controller, attach another property to scope named product. So we're going to say scope.product. We're going to set it equal to this object. We're going to give it a key of name with the value of the book of trees. And 
we're going to give it another key with the value of 19. Close that off so it's happy. And let's run that. Make sure this works for us. And number two, in index.html, inside of the title, access the product's name and display it uh, using an expression. So we'll say product.name. So basically, we're just grabbing the product here and we're grabbing its key of name. And let's run that. So now we should see, there it is, the title, the book of trees. And also, let's go in here and bind the price. So underneath price, we can say product.price. And if you guessed it right, we should now see 19. There it is, 19. So let's move on. OK, so the instructions here are currently the product price shows up as a number. It would be better to format it as a currency rather than change the data in the controller. Let's use an AngularJS filter to format the data in the view. In index.html, in the price class, change the expression to look like this. So the way this works is we have our binding. Put this pipe here, which looks like a pipe. And this says, hey, Angular, I want to use a filter. And then we pass it the name of the filter. So what happens is this is the value we want to use in the filter. This is the name of the filter. And as soon as you pass it this, behind the scenes, this is a built-in filter, but I'm sure later on in this course we'll go on and build our own filter. Maybe not this one, but one of the ones on Code Academy. And basically what this does is this uh, uses localization to uh, you know, format it with a dollar sign since we're in the U.S. or I'm filming this video in the U.S. So there it is, $19. Cool. Um, let's move on. So it says, AngularJS comes with a few more built-in filters. Let's use two more. In main controller inside scope.product, add a third property called pubdate. So we're going to add a third property called pubdate. And we are going to say, we're going to give it a new date. Okay, and let's run that. Make sure it picks up on that. And yep, that's good to go. And then it says in two, in index.html inside of date, display the product's pubdate. So we're going to bind product.pubdate. Make sure we're getting this in here. And this should format it month, date, year, I'm pretty sure, or what well, we haven't formatted yet, but that's like the UTC version, I'm guessing. And so three, we'll format the pub date by piping the date filter. So remember, we have the pipe and then the, and the name of the filter. So in this case, Angular comes uh, straight out of the box with this date filter. So now we have a nicer um, date. And finally, we're going to use one more filter on the name. So here's our name, pipe. We're going to call uppercase. I'm sure you can imagine what this does. So this is Book of Trees now. When we run this, Book of Trees will now be all capitalized. So cool. Let's move on. Instructions for this one. Let's add more data to the controller and, disp and display them in the view. In the controller, delete the scope.product object. OK, so let's delete that. All right, let's get that going. And then we're going to create a new property called scope dot products and we're going to set this equal to this array of objects of products so let me let me grab all of this at once there we go close that off and let's run that and yep looks like that worked and then finally what we will do is inside of our view we're going to get rid of uh, this column medium six and we're going to loop over our data now. So I'm going to explain to you what this does. This is ng repeat. Anytime you see ng, it's just short for Angular. So this is a directive or a custom HTML um, attribute in this case that the Angular team built called ng repeat. So it's sort of intuitive. We're going to repeat or iterate over something. So this is the local variable product, but you could, you could call this whatever you want. Products, this is scope.products. So we're saying, for each product and products, loop over it and give it all this data. And we're binding to the name, the price, and the pub date. So let's run this now and make sure this indeed gives us what we want. And we could now see we have um, we have two uh, iterations because we have two in here, and they are indeed what we want. So let's move on. Uh, one, the problem now is that both products have the same image. Let's fix this in the view inside of the column medium six. Replace image source with ng source. So we will go ahead and do that. We will say ng source. Remember, 
ng is angular source. The reason for this is because we're binding, so we do not want it to show up until we have the binding, or until we have the image actually. So this will hide it until we get the data back that we need. So we'll say product.cover and uh, image source equals product.cover. And let's just make sure we are getting what we want. And now, there, there you have it. We're getting our two images back differently. Cool. And was that it for that one? Yep. So let's move on. Um, eight in the controller, add two of your favorite books to the scope.products array. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to copy this twice. Uh, but basically, you will see that we will now have two more elements in our ng repeat. And let's run this. So one, two, three, and four, and do next. And on our instructions, we say in the controller, the scope.products array, add a new property named likes. So we're going to add a property here. And for each one, we're going to add likes. Set this equal to zero. We're going to add this on for each instance. So let's do that. Like zero. Like zero. Let me format this a little bit better. And then um, like zero, cool. And then let's see if that works. And that looks good. And then under date, we will add this. So we'll look for date, and then we'll add this rating and likes. So cool. And uh, display of products likes. So we're gonna bind here, and we're gonna say product likes. So now we should see zeros here. Let's just make sure this indeed works. So here you have it, zero, 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 and zero. Cool. Uh, back in the controller, we're going to attach a new property, which is going to be our function. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to call it uh, sc scope. Um, it's going to be called scope dot plus one. It's a function which takes in an index or a pointer to that element. And what we're going to do is we're going to say scope dot products index dot likes plus or equal to one, so we're going to add one on each time. Um, so you might be wondering how that works. Well, we're going to wire it up uh, any minute here to a click event, a click handler. So it says in the view, modify likes to look like this, class likes, and we're going to do ng click equals plus one, and then Angular gives us this variable dollar sign index, which gives us access to that element. Um, I think you could do it with just the product as well, but we're going to use the index just to demonstrate another um, another way of doing it. So let's make sure this works. It does indeed, but let's try it out. So one, two, three, four, five, and you can see how they all are staying in sync and are different. So cool. Let's move on to ten. So it says in the controller in the scope product array, add a new property named dislikes. So we are going to do that. We're going to say dislikes, and we're going to set that to zero. And we're going to add that for each of these. Dislikes, zero. And we're going to add that again. I'm just trying to format it nicely. And did we add it everywhere? Yeah, we did. And then down here, now that we have that, uh, we're going to add a P class of dislikes. And we're going to bind it. So let me copy and paste that. And right under our likes, we are going to add dislikes. And uh, let me close that off. Inside of here, we are going to say, we're going to give it like a minus sign, and we're going to say product dot dislikes. So let's make sure this binds correctly. So now we can see we have our dislike right here. And back at the controller, we're going to attach a new property called um, minus one. So we're going to modify the function we have here. And we're going to say scope dot minus one, which is a function which takes in an index. And what do we want to do with that? We want to grab the scope dot products index um, dot dislikes this time. We want to increment that by one. And let me get rid of that right there. Uh, and let's let's run that real quick. To make sure that indeed works for us, and it does. And in the view, add an ng click to minus one. So let's do that. So we'll say ng click equals 
minus one and we'll pass in the index. So let me, let's just run that one more time to make sure that it indeed works. So we have the plus one and the minus one working. Cool. Um, and finally, so it says, congratulations, you built an AngularJS app um, from scratch. What can we generalize so far? A visitor, a user visits the AngularJS app. The view presents the app's data through the use of expressions, filters, and directives. Directives bind new behavior HTML elements. A user clicks an element in the view. If the element has a directive, AngularJS runs the function. The function in the controller updates the state of the data, and the view automatically changes and displays the updated data. The page doesn't need to reload at any point. So uh, really cool how that works, and uh, you can see how it can save you a lot of time. So guys, up next is directives. Learn how to use directives to make standalone UI components, user interface components. So we are now 42% through. We have about, let's see, we have one, two, and yeah, we have three more to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks, have a great day.